everyone this is ami patel this video is about rectifier different parameters like efficiency ripple factor and peak inverse voltage in the previous video of this chapter i had discussed about half wave rectifier full wave rectifier and bridge rectifier and we had also seen the derivation of the rms and dc values of the voltages and currents and uh, this video will help you to compare all this three rectifier based on this parameters that is the efficiency ripple factor and peak inverse voltage so let us begin so first we will see the efficiency uh, first we will calculate the efficiency for half wave rectifier so for any uh, electronic circuit if i want to find out the efficiency then it is just the ratio of output power which we are getting to the input power which is being applied so here in the rectifier the input which we are applying is the sinusoidal signal and the output which we are getting is the pulsating dc so the output signal waveform for the half wave rectifier is shown on screen that you can see and uh, the rms and the dc value of the current for the output signal we had already derived in the previous video so idc for half wave rectifier is im by pi and irms is im by 2 now efficiency is equal to dc output power divided by ac input power because at the output of the rectifier we are getting the dc uh, signal and at the input we are applying the ac signal now dc output power is given by pdc is equal to idc square into rm now uh, putting the value of idc into the equation we are getting the next equation that is pdc is equal to im square divided by pi square into rl now ac input power is pac is equal to irms square into the resistance and here it is the addition of rl that is the load resistance rf that is the forward resistance of the pn junction diode and rs that is the resistance of the secondary of the transformer now putting the value of irms that is im by 2 in this equation we are getting the next equation now put this value of the powers that is dc output power and the ac input power into the equation of the efficiency we are getting next equation now try to solve this equation efficiency is equal to 4 im square into rl divided by im square pi square into rl plus rf plus rs now you can see im square will get cancel out from the numerator and denominator and we have rs plus rf that is the secondary resistance plus the forward resistance of the pn junction diode its value is very much small as compared to the load which is connected to the rectifier so we can neglect this rf plus rl and we will get rl which is to be cancelled from the numerator and denominator and finally the efficiency is equal to 4 divided by pi square and the putting the value of pi square we will be getting uh, efficiency is equal to 0.04 0 and if we can represent this efficiency in form of percentage or also that's why by multiplying 100 we are getting the efficiency is 40 percent which is very less so for half wave rectifier efficiency is 40 percent now we will find out the efficiency equation for the full wave rectifier so let us analyze the output and the input signal you can see the input which is applied to the full wave rectifier is a sinusoidal signal and output which we are getting is the pulsating dc as shown in the figure now for this output for the full wave rectifier we had already calculated the dc and the rms value of the current so idc is equal to 2 im by pi irms is equal to im by root 2 
Now, the efficiency is equal to DC output power divided by AC input power. DC output power is given by PDC is equal to IDC square into RL. Put the value of IDC. We have PDC is equal to 4 IM square divided by pi square into RL. Similarly, AC input power is IRMS square into RL plus RF plus RS, where RL is the load resistance which is connected at the output, RF is the forward resistance of the PN junction diode and RS is the resistance of the transformer secondary. Now put the value of IRMS and we are getting next equation. Put the value of uh, DC output power and AC input power in the equation of efficiency. We are getting next equation. Just uh, by solving it, we have next equation. And IM square from the numerator and denominator will get cancelled out. And again here, the RS plus RF, that is the secondary resistance of the coil, and the forward resistance of the PN junction diode is of very small value as compared to the load resistance and we will neglect it and RL will get cancelled out from the numerator and denominator. Finally, we have efficiency is equal to 8 divided by pi square and that is equal to 0 0.0812 and if we convert it in form of percentage then it is 81.2%. So for the full wave rectifier, the efficiency is almost double and it is very high. That's why practically the full wave rectifier is used. Again, we have full wave rectifier with the center tip transformer and the bridge rectifier. So for both of this rectifier, the output voltage and current waveform is same. That's why the efficiency for both of this full wave rectifier is same. That is 81.2%. Now we will find out the ripple factor for the half wave rectifier. What is ripple factor? Ripple factor is the ratio of RMS value of AC component of output to the DC component of the output signal. So we had already seen in the previous videos of the rectifier that the output of the rectifier is not pure DC. It contains some AC component. That's why it is called the pulsating DC. So the ripple factor will find out that how much ripples are present in the rectifier output. So that measure is the ripple factor. Ripple factor of the rectifier measures the AC component present in the rectifier output. So we had already calculated VDC that is Vm by pi and VRMS that is Vm by 2 for the half wave rectifier. Ripple factor is the ratio of RMS value of the AC component to the DC value of the output voltage that is is equal to VRRMS divided by VDC. Now the RMS value of the AC component of rectifier output is given by VRRMS is equal to square root of VRMS square minus VDC square. Here VRMS is the RMS value of the rectifier output and VDC is the DC value of the rectifier output. Whereas the VRRMS is the RMS value of the AC component of the rectifier output. Now put this equation of VRRMS into the ripple factor equation. We are getting the next equation that is square root of VRMS divided by VDC whole square minus 1. Now put the value of RMS voltage and the DC voltage into this equation. We have next equation. Just uh, solving the next equation, VM will get cancelled out and we have Ripple factor is equal to square root of pi square divided by 4 minus 1. And if we solve it, we'll be getting the ripple factor is equal to 1.21. This is for the half wave rectifier. And ripple factor can also be represented in form of percentage. 
So if we multiply it with the 100, then we have 121% uh, ripple factor. That means 121% of ripples are present into the half wave rectifier. Now we will find out the ripple factor for the full wave rectifier. Again, uh, we had already seen that the ripple factor is the ratio of RMS value of the AC component of the rectifier output to the DC component of the rectifier output. And for full wave rectifier, VDC is equal to 2 Vm by pi and VRMS is equal to Vm by root 2. Now next is the equation for the ripple factor. Now VRMS that is the RMS value of the AC component is given by square root of VRMS square minus VDC square. Put this value into the equation of the ripple factor. We are getting next equation. Put the value of RMS and DC voltages into the next equation. And solving it, we will be getting ripple factor is equal to square root of pi square divided by 8 minus 1. And if we solve it, we are getting ripple factor is equal to 0.482 which is very less as compared to the half wave rectifier. It says that the ripples, that is the AC component present into the full wave rectified output is very much less than that of the half wave rectified output. That's why full wave rectifier is preferred over the half wave rectifier. So if we represent it in form of percentage, the ripple factor would be 48.2%. Now we will uh, see the next parameter that is a peak inverse voltage and we will find it for the half wave rectifier first. Now what is peak inverse voltage? The peak inverse voltage is the maximum voltage across the non-conducting diode of the rectifier. Now this voltage across the non-conducting diode must be less than its breakdown voltage. Otherwise, the diode will get destroyed or get damaged. This is the circuit diagram for half wave rectifier and we will analyze this circuit for the negative half cycle. During negative half cycle, the diode D is uh, in the reverse bias or it is not conducting. Now, the voltage which is appearing across its two terminal across the diode is the voltage across the secondary as shown in the figure. The voltage across diode during this negative half cycle will be the Vm only. So peak inverse voltage for half wave rectifier is the Vm. What it uh, says that the diode which we are selecting for this half wave rectifier should be such that its breakdown voltage is greater than this Vm. That is the negative peak of the input signal. Now we will see the peak inverse voltage for the full wave rectifier. Here we are having the full wave rectifier with the center tap transformer and uh, the input signal is applied to the primary and during positive half cycle the signal which is appearing on the secondary is shown and during positive half cycle diode D1 is on. That means it is conducting and diode D2 is in forward bias. That's why it is non-conducting. Now we will find out what is the voltage across non-conducting diode that is the D2. As shown in the figure, you will find the two terminal of the diode D2 is directly connected to the secondary of the transformer. And the secondary of the transformer has two parts that is the upper half and lower half. Across the upper half, the voltage which is appearing is Vm and across lower half, the voltage is appearing Vm. And if we added the total voltage appearing across the non-conducting diode, that is the D2, will be 2 Vm. That means the diode which we are selecting over here in place of D2 should be such that its breakdown voltage should be greater than the 2 Vm, whereas Vm is the negative peak of the input signal. Now we will see the peak inverse voltage for the bridge rectifier and the circuit is as shown in the figure. Now we are applying the 
sinusoidal input signal and we will analyze the positive half cycle. So the polarity of the voltage on to the secondary is as shown in the figure and during this the D2 and D3 diode are in the forward bias so they will act as a closed switch and diode D1 and D4 are non-conducting diode and we will verify over here that what is the voltage across D1 and then what is the voltage across D4. So across D1 you can see as shown in the figure uh, the two terminal of the D1 is directly connected to the secondary of the transformer through the conducting diode and the voltage across this diode D1 that is non-conducting diode will be Vm. And similarly for D4 also as shown in the figure its two terminals are directly connected to the secondary of the transformer through the conducting diode and the voltage across D4 that is non-conducting diode will be Vm. So peak inverse voltage for the bridge rectifier is Vm. So you can select the diode over here such that its breakdown voltage is greater than Vm. So if uh, we are selecting diode with the lower breakdown voltage then its cost is less and if we go for the PN junction diode with the higher breakdown voltage then the cost is more. So here you can compare this two full wave rectifier that is full wave rectifier with the center tap transformer and the bridge rectifier. In the full wave rectifier with the center tap transformer we have center tap transformer its cost is very high as compared to the normal transformer as well as it is bulky because on the secondary the number of turns are more and the peak inverse voltage for this rectifier is 2 Vm that means the diode which we are using uh, is also with a higher breakdown voltage so cost here also the cost will get increased that's why among this two full wave rectifier the bridge rectifier is preferred because it is using the normal transformer that's why the cost is less as well as the area required for this transformer is also less so it is less bulky than the other full wave rectifier and here we can use the PN junction diode with the lower breakdown voltage because its peak inverse voltage is V. This way you can compare all this rectifier based on the parameters that is efficiency, ripple factor and the peak inverse voltage. With this I am ending this session over here. Thank you.